take Klaas's passport and take Fairweather T500 helmet and the rifle scope. Well, there's our evidence. Uh, A small travel passport with visa stamps in it is issued by the Republic of Orania. You found it in the Phasmid's Nest on the island. You can open it for more details. This passport, issued by the Sovereign Republic of Orania, is issued to a black-haired woman called Katazina Alazie. Classius hidden documents from the MT boy. Look at the photo. It's Klasia, with short black hair and glasses. She looks boyish, younger somehow. I'd like to see that picture, but okay. What was this doing in the Phasmid's Nest? Maybe our man, Mr. Dross, took it from Classius, or whatever her name was. Hiding place, or...? I think the Phasmid took it. Hmm. Like a magpie? What a coincidence. Then it would also have collected the other objects, which would be highly unusual. I can see how the helmet could wash up on the island, and the scope. Maybe Mr. Dross lost it. But to seek this out would be very unusual behavior for an arthropod. It says Katazin Alazia. She said it would be for Anouk Meyer Smith. Anouk Meyer Smith. Katazina Alazia was supposed to be her real name. Where Klazia comes from, remember? God damn it. Maybe this is her real passport, not a fake? Because this is her real name. No, she lied to us. Her so-called real name was not her real name. Somehow she's managed to lie to us about that too. He almost smiles. What's her real name then? I don't know. But it's not Katarzyna Alasia or Klasia or Anouk Meyer Smith. We didn't even scratch the surface with her, detective. Perhaps it's better that we didn't arrest her. Who knows what hell she'd be raising in my district by now. Put the passport away. All right. Do you, I think we have all the clothes of that, uh, that armor now, all the pieces of that armor now, except for the boots, which, well, are gone now. What is it? What do you want from me? I can't go. Something is very wrong with him now. Sir, how could you not see the phasmid? See. He stares at the reeds and falls silent. He's about to die, isn't he? Mr. Dras? The man does not respond. He keeps staring, black eyes glazed over and bulging from their sockets, his gap toothed mouth shaking. Snap your fingers under his nose. A light shiver passes him, followed by nothing. His hands are trembling and he breathes slowly. Well, he's dead. Not yet, but there's no way you, we can get him medical assistance as fast as he would need it to survive. He's going into some kind of psychomotor immobility. The good news is, this solves our transportation problem, doesn't it, Mr. Dross? The trembling mouth appears to sigh. Between this and the broken tire he's used for a boat, I think it's safe to leave him here, while we go and get help. It will need to be medical first, I'm afraid. What has happened to this man? Old age and shock. He looks at him, then you. Old age and shock, yes. The appearance of the Fasmid in conjunction with the stress of the arrest. He spent his entire life here. For him to live would be... He shakes his head. We found some things in the Fasmid's nest, Mr. Doss. He stares into the reeds. Your words don't stir anything in him. Perhaps you should... Show him the detached scope. I... I lost. You lost it, Mr. Dross. He turns his eyes to the reeds again, as he's done so many times. Beige and white stripes. He lost the scope. Then it somehow made its way over there. With the help of a magpie phasmid. The lieutenant observes the lens sparkle in your hand. This sight is a T9, Mr. Dross. Was it attached to the rifle when you made the shot? Silence. Not even a sigh. Show him the ceramic. Ceramic? Ceramic? I don't know. Helmet. Nothing. Just dull staring. Not even rage left. Wherever he is. If Kuno kicked it into the sea, as he said he did, the ebb would put it back here. This makes sense. Mr. Dross could have picked it up. 
Oh, the phase made even. If it did, this is incredible. Show him the Ornier's passport. No reaction. His breathing is slow, and he appears very old all of a sudden. Around 80. This is an old man, at last. No longer a tin soldier, but the broken down remains of a man. Did you take this passport and other papers from a boy on the coast? The spirit. He hears us. The spirit? No reply. He's gone again. Try something else? We got him back for a moment. Uh, I'm going to let you rest now, Mr. Dross. The plastic cape flaps around his face in a gust of wind. His back is slouched and his mouth open. The blacks of his eyes are receding. His pupils are returning to normal. Hang tight. We should think about getting back to the mainland to get help. He'll be safe here if we don't take too long. If we don't take too long. If we do take too long, he'll be dead. Alright, let's try not taking too long then. Where would we even go to though? To Im's Kanima? Maybe. Oh, we need to get up there. For someone to get help for him. ICM. This feels familiar somehow. M. What is the ICM? Insulindian Citizens Militia. It's the official name of the Communards Army, the Black and White Army of the Revolution. Sounds an awful lot like... RCM. It sounds like RCM, Revachol Citizens Militia. It does. Why? The RCM may descend from the ICM. May? It's impossible to say. It was chaos after the war. The name was good for getting people to join us. Revachol West was mostly workers and criminals. Nice political thoughts rush through your neocortex. It's going to be hard to say them. Carrying around all that weight on a busted crutch is making you pant. Mm. Just catch your breath. This is better preserved than the others. You can still read the sign. He bows to inspect the barrel. A white star. No, an upside down star. With its horns in the sky, the symbol of the commune. Are those spec stars too? No, that's the uninhabited archipelago. A DeLorean era symbol of Insulinda, known as the face in the sea. What are we even looking at? Looks old. What's it still doing here? After 44 years? That's not nearly enough to hide what happened here, Lieutenant Yefreto. One of these barrels was still leaking fuel, as you saw. The city is full of things like this. Old bullets, guns, fuel. Finish the force. The dry grass crackles under your feet as you stop. Far away, birds' wings touch the still surface of the sea. What is that butter? The flock of quail departs. Now more than a hundred meters away. A hundred and two. A hundred and five. Underneath the flutter? On the islet, there is almost no wind under the rain quietly falling on the reeds. Bulrushes swaying on the waterline. Long dried leaves chafing against each other, the soft raindrops. Like a silent orchestra tuning at the beginning of some major work. To the west. A silent hiss, sea air moving through the needles of a pine tree. To the east. The faraway roar of the city, distant like today's dream. Before it, the sound of sand, the low tide filtered through its grains. A bird tending to its feathers. Raindrops fall on water, strangely quiet, forming circles in the distance. Ahead. A low hum. The air slowly moves through a concrete box, through its ancient slits and cracks, resonating, hollow. A big building. Beyond that, further north. Air flows out of a pillbox window. There is very little there. The air cossets flowers on the meadow. Absolute silence. Reeds motionless. 
bulrushes motionless. A drop of rain falls on a black log of an extinguished campfire. Below the silence. A jitter, a sound impatient to happen, but not yet in this world. You hear some kind of limb fidget, producing an imperceptible tick. No, it's just your imagination. You can't hear such things. Him. Yes? Have you noticed how quiet it is? I have. Is that why we're stopping? Hmm. Wait. I have to listen to one more thing. The lieutenant nods in silence. No, let's open our eyes. Let's stop listening. And let's head down to the boat. Back to where we came from. The skiff is swaying on the waves by the dock. Let's return to the mainland. Let's. We are done here. He says, adjusting his glasses as he looks out over the water. The skiff rocks gently under your weight as you get in. The ride back is uneventful and quiet. But for the sound of conversation on the water, there is someone inland waiting for you. Two men and a woman stand on the concrete square of a nameless village, looking at a small yellow boat as it draws closer. The sea is calm. You reach the jetty and climb out of the skiff. Why is everything so black around here? Is that how it always was? Maybe. Look what the tide brought in. Says the man without sunglasses. Suddenly his expression changes and he tilts his head. I want to call you a teapot, but I'm honestly kind of impressed. No idea where you got all that gear, but there's no doubt in my mind that some bad, bad people are looking for it. Also, you look like a fucking idiot. Whatever this is, it is completely unimportant compared to what you've just seen. This is the man with sunglasses from the Whirling in Rags. But where are his sunglasses? Wait, you're the man with sunglasses. That's right. And you're some kind of murder machine. Who are you people? Hello, I'm Trent Heilerstam. I believe we've met on several occasions. We have, in fact. I'm your goddamn partner, Jean Vicumar, and this is your special task force. Or what's left of it. Special Consultant Trant Heidelstam, Petrol Officer Judith Minot. Hi. We've come to scrape what's left of you off the pavement. Lieutenant Kim Kisuragi, Prison 57. We've just come from the island where our investigation led us. The scene is making even him feel as though he has to justify your actions. We might need your help with something later. He adds, suddenly regaining his confidence. As if he recalled that he's in fact a decorated police lieutenant and not a naughty boy. But this is clearly a departmental matter, so I'm going to leave you to discuss it among yourselves. No, Kim, you've got to have my back. Let's destroy them. It's good to meet you, Lieutenant Kitsuhagi. She says warmly, flashing the lieutenant the tiniest of smiles. Letting the lieutenant know he shouldn't feel embarrassed over the shitstorm that's about to befall you. What is this about? Ari, we want to help you. Trant, I believe this is where you come in? Um, I don't quite know what I'm doing here. I was asked to participate as an expert. I think I need to manage your expectations a little. I'm at best an enthusiast in cognitive science. My background is in something else entirely. I engage in neurology on a merely theoretical level. In fact, I should probably get going. No, Trant, it's too late. You're part of this shit now. What have you got to say for yourself, shit kid? What does he have to say for himself? He left you to catch the bullets. Shit kid, what an interesting Monica. What's a shit kid? You, shit kid, that's you. Despite all that you've done, the deserter, the phasmid, the case. Despite all that I've done? No, because of all that you've done. How did you know I was here? The cafeteria manager you fucked over told us where you went. After all that Sylvie stuff, he betrays me. Shit, kid. He didn't betray you. He just told us the direction you went in. Who's Sylvie? No one. It's not important. It better not be. He means you better not be partying with this Sylvie, shit kid. 
You aren't a man with sunglasses at all. You're not even blunt. Guilty as charged. I heard you lost your mind and your memory. I wanted to see if it was true. And it was. Good work, Harry. You're insane now. There's one less person for me and everyone else to rely on. He was too sarcastic for you to realize who he was. Actually, I suspected something was off. Did you? Or did you literally not recognize my face? We've been partners for how long, Harry? Don't answer that. You don't remember. <laughs> you! You never told me you're not the horse-faced woman. I don't know. My name is not horse-faced woman. It's Judith Minot. I was assigned to your unit two months ago. I thought we were friends. Patrol Officer Minot, glad to make the acquaintance. Let's put the past behind us. Right, sir. The tone is suddenly very cold. So, Trant Heidelstam. Turns out to be Special Consultant Trant Heidelstam. Yes, I'm Trant Heidelstam. I never said I wasn't Trant Heidelstam. Wait, what was up with the kid then? Mikael? Mikael is my son. Oh, yeah? What was up with all the interesting history? Spying on me? No, I was just interested in the Feld building and the Martinez beachhead. And Mikhail wanted to see Martinez. It was a coincidence. So, what are you special consulting here? What indeed? I was asked to share my take on some of the more obscure theories developed in Königstein in the 30s. Like partial psychotraumatic amnesia, group personality theory... He's here to see if you're insane. He's smart. Let's move on. <laughs> Duped again. No one's who they say they are. Duped? Hey, here's a brilliant idea. Don't be a morbid drunk, and you won't be duped so easily. <laughs> Gardener, scab leader, this. Tell me at least you are who you said you were. Yes, I'm still Kim Kisuragi. Still a lieutenant from Prison 57. Still caught up in this crossfire, <laughs> too. You mentioned a task force? Yeah. Major Crimes Unit, under Lieutenant Dubois and Vicomar. Ring any bells? Refresh my memory. Who else is in this? Refresh your memory? It's a goddamn Major Crimes Unit. There's you, me, Jude, Trunt fucking Heidelstam, and Guillaume Baby. He stares at you. I'm technically just a civilian advisor. Fuck you. <laughs> You're part of this shit show. Yeah, uh, first, who's Guillaume Baby? Oh, that's an interesting story, actually. Guillaume Bévy is a police reporter who joined our team. He was really good. Then he left, because he lost faith in your ability to lead the unit. Other people have left too. Good, smart people. People we won't get back. Only me and this really patient petrol officer are still here. And Trump, because I'm forcing him to stay. Is this Guillaume Bévy blonde and partial to sunglasses? Is this Guillaume Bévy blonde with sunglasses like you were? See? There! He's getting it. I was impersonating him. Look at me, I'm G-Baby. It was going to be funny. But then, you really did have brain damage. So, not so much anymore. Okay, so what does the unit do? Do? It's a major crimes unit. We clear the desk of cases so Precinct 41 doesn't look like the worst station in town. We're shit tier now, Harry. Because of you. The 41st isn't... Uh... He trails off, not wishing to finish the sentence. Where have you been all this time? There was a mercenary tribunal. God damn it, Harry. He shifts his weight, crosses his arms and looks you in the eye. You told us to fuck off. You said we are cramping your style. You're detective god. Fuck everything. All will burn. Detect or die. Right, so you let me face a squad of trained killers alone just to teach me a lesson? It wasn't like that. Fuck you, Harry. We didn't know there was gonna be a tribunal, did we? <laughs> Why didn't you detect or die then? Oh, you think it was cool? You saying that? Aesthetic somehow? You were crying when we got here. Breaking things. You said we were going into the abyss. None of us wanted to see the abyss, so we fucked off. <sighs> like you told us to. None of this is ringing any bells. The bells aren't ringing because you have brain damage. Trant, this is where you come in. How bad is it? Well, he doesn't have visible tremors. He talks without slurring. He can drive a boat. He's standing, reasoning. All good signs, but 
Complete retrograde amnesia. Episodic and semantic. Meaning you forgot both who you are and the definitions of money, Isola, Pell, and so on. As displayed in a station call, our interactions with him and... I don't want to be a snitch, but also mine with him before when Harry did not seem to know who I was. It's all very interesting. Interesting? Yes, interesting. I have my theories, but I would like to hear Harry's thoughts first. Harry, what do you think happened to you? Neurologically, psychologically, and why not socioeconomically? Hmm. It might have something to do with an anomaly in the church, a two millimeter hole in the world. Corresponding to the 20 centimeter hole in your brain? Sure. This theory has great symmetry. I see how it folds into itself neatly. Precisely, Satellite Officer Vic Mayer. It's Martinez. Hmm. I knew you would be too close-minded to understand the anomaly. This sounds odd, but I was there. The church on the coast was shaking from an audio-spatial anomaly. It may have been anthroponetic or perhaps related to radio waves. Either way, it was real. I've even put it in my report. You should read it. I do not, however, think it has anything to do with him drinking himself to the point of brain damage. Thank you, Lieutenant Kitsuragi. Just to clarify, I do not think Isolary and Trapanetics are a hoax. Pale produces global phenomena. It's proven. However, what has not been proven is total memory loss after drinking too much Commodore Red. Honestly, I think it's just lying to us. But Detective Vigmer, he has blanked out before. I uh have? -huh. Yes, a couple of times. After some of the more serious benders. One was after the two drunks case. The other, when we looked into that mural. So you don't remember not remembering. Beautiful. Yeah. The two cases in your ledger, the unsolvable case and the new world mural, those were recent. Those cases were hard on you. Interesting. So at first he dipped his toes into it, prepared. That's where he would have gotten the idea, yes. Practice. And then he used alcohol to get there, so to speak. What do you mean? Well, here is my theory. What if this is an absolutely normal reaction to the world we're living in? What if this is not a significant anomaly at all? Something to be explained, approached as a defect. Look at the sensory input here. The gestures toward the scenery. Look at the ruins, the neon. Listen to the radio, the multitudes, the people. Live here for 40 years. As a police detective, he's like a magnetic reader on the world team, to borrow a known metaphor. Harry's been pushed flat against it. Total input. Hardwired to the free market. He just needed for its end. Okay, Trant, thank you. That's absolutely meaningless. I'm glad we brought you. Will he or will he not be able to work in the major crimes unit? Is he a cretin now? I want to know that. He's not a cretin, and he is able to do work. If not in his previous leadership role, then as a line detective. Hmm. I'm ready to lead again. No one even mentioned that. I misphrased my question. It should have been, is he able to put his clothes on and use the party? Or do we need to get him on the disability pension? What now? Now, nothing. Now we're just going to stand here. Really? No. Now we discuss that. What the fuck did you do to our motor carriage? Why is it there, Harry? Hmm. <laughs> I thought the killer would be underwater. He wasn't. <laughs> the time had come to kill a sunset. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what it's doing there. Hmm. I do. You drove it into the water. Everyone on this street saw you do it. It's going to be a local landmark, too. On the brochure. Thank you for fucking us, Harry. Thank you for destroying 45,000 real of police property that's coming out of my payslip. You know that, right? You're gonna get fired. And I'm gonna pay till I die. <sighs> it doesn't matter. Your badge, Harry. Show me your badge. <laughs> what I do have is this futuristic arm. I got my badge right here. 
In a rush to demonstrate your badge, your eager fingers can't sustain a grip on the smooth plastic and the badge slips out of your hand. They're catching that one. Good thing I put that pointer there. Not today, badge. <laughs> Behold my badge. And your gun? He asked, unimpressed by the piece of plastic in your hand. As if having your badge and gun are natural states, not achievements. What is it with all these material objects? Yeah, my gun is right here. Phew, he has it. And he didn't drop it. You're drunk like a bum, Harry. Put that thing away before you kill someone. I'm not drunk. I haven't started drinking again. So you forgot to drink? I don't buy it. Why do you smell like a corpse then? He's wounded. It's been a long week and he's handled an actual corpse. Hmm. Well, I just haven't washed myself after the autopsy. Without a reply, the satellite officer covers his nose. Yeah, I've handled an actual corpse. I don't believe you. You're drunk. You let a suspect escape, a certain glacier, because you were too drunk to assess our flight risk. We've read the report, Sari. Lieutenant Kitsuhagis. We know. Not taking her in was the right thing to do. She gave a vital clue that led us to the island. Oh, well. If she was nice, I'm not even gonna get into the other suspect, who also escaped. Yeah, Ruby something. Or the fact that you're Evar Claire's little peony now, doing I don't know what for him. That small time stuff, that's nothing. That's a humorous anecdote. Compared to the six people who were gunned down, the streets are literally red with blood, Harry. It was fucking mass murder. He did everything he could. We did everything we could. The company hired and vetted mercenaries. Lieutenant Dubois could between them and the locals. He did so at considerable risk to his own life. He was shot and survived only because of his armor. We stopped an execution, not a negotiation. The loss of life was minimal compared to what it could have been. I also solved the case. It's solved, all of it. Detective, it's better if I do that. He says in a lower voice. It's so much better if he does this. A million times better. Thank you for the input, Lieutenant Kitsuragi. I didn't mean to suggest you didn't handle the situation. He brushes a stray strand of hair out of his eye and coughs. He thinks of apologizing, but decides against it. You spent the week with him on this case. What is your take? On um, the case? On Lieutenant Yeufretor Dubois. Well, the drinking, the gun losing. Also losing the badge. That's all true. Although he has not been drinking on the job this week. See? One week. Then there's the boring cop issue. Despite all the obvious and almost grotesque mannerisms and sartorial choices, he still insists he isn't characteristic enough. It's... it's worrying. Especially considering his political views. Detective Dubois is, as you may know, a Mazovian socio-economist. He wants to liquidate the ruling class, which, again, for a police officer, is a little odd. You should yell something. That's not a good idea. Yes, let's let the big boys talk. And then there's the motor carriage in the sea, something I was not present for. But despite all this, he is a great detective, one of the best I have seen, in fact. He can talk human beings into telling him everything, and he doesn't stop. In all the time I've spent with him, he has not once stopped pursuing leads, however far-fetched and tangential. He is tireless, madly driven. Yep. And he solved it, near perfectly. In one week we have a confession, a murder weapon, and the perpetrator. Locked on the island right now, awaiting transportation. He apprehended a revolutionary brigade who stayed hidden for 50 years ever since the revolution, who's probably committed other murders over those years. Oh, and he also discovered a new species. Don't tell them that, Kim. A new species? A colossal stick insect. It was on the island, camouflaged as the reeds. It 
uh, unfolded from the reed. I think we may be dealing with the insulindian phasmid. He takes out the photo of the phasmid and shows it to the officers across the yard. The wind blows, flapping the glossy rectangle in his hand. You hear gasps beneath the howling of the wind. As you can see, it's about three meters tall. In fact, we think it may be the largest land invertebrate ever discovered. <laughs> a pretty okay detective and an absolutely giant communist. Yeah, let's not say anything. Fucking hell is that? Is this somehow connected to the case? <laughs> not really, to be honest. The killer did not seem to be aware of the phasmid's presence, exhibiting a strange, atypical dementia. He fell into a stupor after its appearance. He became near catatonic. It's probably not connected per se, but the perpetrator knew of its existence. So it is connected. I must say this is absolutely extraordinary. It's... I don't even have words for it. Yes, it really does make it hard to fire the drone. <laughs> His tired eyes follow the photo as the lieutenant puts it away. Now you make your case. Now is the time. Now or never. I also started a nightclub. Um, the killer, Lilianovic Drosh, we have a strong motive for him. Lilianovic? A revolutionary matronym. A revolutionary matronym? The custom started in Grad, where they have patronyms. Krasovich, Larsovich, etc. The revolutionaries saw this as a chauvinist atavism, so they used matronyms, derived from the mother's name instead. This man's mother was Lillian, his Lillian's son, Lilianovich. The custom was overturned after the revolution failed, but not before it made it to Revachov. So, it is what a soldier of the ICM would be called. Thank you, Trout. Thank you for that piece of cultural theory. You said you have a motive? Of course, excuse me, I just thought it was noteworthy. He wasn't quite sure about the straggler before he heard this detail. It must have convinced him. He killed the mercenary in an act of jealousy. Jealousy? I thought this Lilianovich was an old man. To have been hiding for 50 years, 70 something? A strange psychosexual fascination. The result of spending all this time in solitude on the islands of this bay. And trauma too. He himself gave a political reason. In his mind, he had killed an enemy combatant. Also, we have ballistics from the gun, matching the bullet found in the dead mercenary's head, and two officers on the scene that Mr. Dross confessed to. It's a clean win. Oh, it's way more than that. Hmm. It's my masterpiece. They'll teach this in cop school. Masterpiece. Get over yourself, Harry. I can still smell the booze on the wind. God damn it. Doesn't it ever <laughs> leave? It is there. Like in your bones or something. It will pass in time. Hmm. The previous head of the Debardeurs Union was assassinated by our killer. This is a conversation for when we are no longer out in the open. In Martinez, where Everhart and Edgar Claire have ears everywhere. Lieutenant lowers his voice just a little. Understood, of course. But a case against Everhart would be big. I would prefer not to partake in anything union related for political neutrality. This has to be good stuff for him to backpedal out of it at first mention. Mm, there was also a dead man on the boardwalk, a missing person I found. Yes, yes. Fallen through a gap in the boardwalk. Drunk. How did you know I found him? The body was transported to Precinct 41, oh, yeah. our morgue. I had Tilbrook and Mullins take care of funeral arrangements and uh, family stuff. You're not the only cop in the world, Harry. This all comes back to us. Still, good work with the missing person, detective. It's still a point for you. No denying it. I also looked into the mystery of the doomed commercial area. I don't know what a doomed commercial area is. Hmm. Rue de saint Gislain 10, a commercial building where all businesses go bankrupt. I looked into it. Why? That's not what you were supposed to do here. There was a fridge we needed and <laughs> a possible witness. He was just chasing a lead and ended up advising a local shopkeeper. 
it was okay. Of course. Call it community outreach, right? Mm. Also, the phasmid was female. The bees are its nest. Female? What makes you think so? You had to see it. It had the subdued colors of a female. And the nesting behavior too, I think. Incredible. Were there eggs in the nest? Not as far as I could see. There were other things there, though. It turns to you. It's interesting time. Forget about the rest. It had gathered items in its nest, a helmet, a scope, and a passport. Actually, you know, this would indicate it was a male. This is far from anything in my field, but I think such nests are called bowers. They are for attracting mates. I still think it was female. Of course, as I said, I'm only guessing. I didn't see it. It must be robust if it can move a whole helmet with its limbs. I think it reproduces by parthenogenesis. As in cloning itself? <laughs> what makes you think so? <sighs> Do I want to say that or will it just make me crazy? Make me sound crazy, I should say. Observation. Well, then it wouldn't matter if it's a male or female. The bower would just be rudimentary behavior from before the parthenogenetic mutation. That makes sense. Yeah. Yes. It does. Very interesting. Such organisms are extremely vulnerable to disease. A single strain of bacteria could wipe out the whole species. We're probably looking at conservation efforts here. It had mandibles that looked like hair and it was completely white on the inside. Yes, but also red colored, beige and brown, a little green on the outside. After unfolding from a single stalk, it still retained parts that looked like reed tufts on its limbs. Incredible. The PR value of this is exceptional. Carp discovers new species. Maybe even discovers the insulindian phasmid. No, no, that's too much. This would really help with some of the uh, problems we've been having. Absolutely, this is great. This does not say vigilante murderers to me at all. This says science, news, human interest. You know, it's a really good thing you have that photo. Without it? He shakes his head. You're doing good here. Perhaps only for a moment, but still. Quit while you're ahead? Or no? Yes, uh, quit while we're ahead. So, what do you say? Want to take this hot shit back? I don't want to, but you discovered a new species and solved the murder. He shrugs. So I have to. Jude? Anything that ends the trial is okay with me. A quick nod. Agreed. The public relations potential of this is too valuable to let go. Okay. We have vehicles in the square. And the perpetrator needs to be taken into custody. Let's go. Now. Now you will finally get to know who you are. Wait, I have a few questions before we go about who I am. The man looks westward, impatiently, jingling his car keys in his pocket. Who am I? Who are you? You're a gym teacher, Harry. What? Well, obviously you're not a gym teacher anymore, but... But before... Before you were a cop, you were a gym teacher in Coron. It's getting really cold outside. Should we maybe... That does explain a lot. Harry, it explains everything. The running <laughs> around, the jumping, the bicep girth, your inexplicable facial hair. Your collection of fallen sportswear of the mast. Some of your more... <clears throat> old school wording choices. Your posture, even. The constant stretches. Also, this guy just everything about this guy oh god contact mike of course contact mike he's been on about mike again i hate that guy <laughs> contact mike is a reprise of the most inspiring basic sporting principle of open competition a 5000 to 1 rank outsider oh you don't say does he also vault an impassable gulf of finance and privilege it is it is getting called out Looks around at the dilapidated fishing village. When was this? When was I a gym teacher? In your 20s or late 20s. You've really let yourself go since then. He looks you over. You said in Couron. I was a gym teacher there? Yes, you tell gym in Couron. I believe that's the term. Tao gym at a high school. You were a high school gym teacher. The smell of sweat and glue. The worn floorboards. Couron is just east of Jamrock. It was a short walk every morning to the baseball field 
or the sports building. High school. Harry, you're going on with Kuno, Andre, Asel, the whole thing on the ice. That's why you are so juvy. <laughs> why did I join the RCM then? The regular. You found some chick. She inspired you to fight the big fight. Be more than you are, all that. You, every morning, walking from Voyager Road to teach Jim. She, leaving for the academy with her spring coat on. The air filled with the smell of smoke and raspberries and incredible hope. An ocean full of hope. Okay, I see now. I knew it. I knew no normal human being <laughs> can run like that. He's an honest to God gym teacher. Why am I like this? It's not a mystery. Some chick fucked you over. Also, you were drunk. You really went with it too. Really maximized the damage. Some chick who? Dora something. Dora Ingerlund? Yeah, you mentioned her name. Not Dora Dubois. Wait, Dora Ingerlund? Something like that. Half Vasa. Vasa is where beautifully and impossibly blonde people come from. So we weren't even married? No one is married anymore. This is Revachol. When was this? God, I don't know. Six years ago? She was way before my time. Six years and you haven't gotten over it? What the hell is wrong with mm. you? Six years? No, it was six. Like, ancient. It's an old man thing. Two old years equals one normal year. That and Dora Ingerlund really tore you a new one. A big one. Who was she? Incredibly bangable. Figures. Extremely fuckable, Harry. Gorgeous. A gorgeous bourgeois woman. Wayfish. Like a welkin, basically. Snow welkin. Blonde welkin. Heartbreak welkin. Pain welkin. I've only seen a picture. But it's obvious you formed a real spiritual connection with how pretty she was. One you never recuperated from. Look, the sun is about to go down. It's time to go home. I think she taught in the Académie des Arts, east of the river. Way east. Hard to say which came first. The middle class chick or the drink. Egg and the chicken kind of thing. My point is, you need to see a psychiatrist about this shit. Not a psychologist. Several degrees harder. Is there something harder than a psychiatrist? A forensic psychiatrist? <laughs> Good talk to that. In other words, he's heard enough about this. Mm. Mm. Lieutenant Kitsuragi, what will you do now? Well, first I will go back to my station and write the most detailed report anyone has ever seen. It will have to be good to cover all these. Then I will have a serious talk with my captain. About what? Detective, we just stopped a small-scale war. Something is happening to Revachol. He pulls up his collar and looks around, the cold spring light reflected in the lenses of his glasses. I don't know what yet, but it's going to be a hard spring for the RCM. We need to get ready, infiltrate, investigate. Want to do that at Station 41? Talk to Captain Price? I'd rather not ruffle the feathers of two captains with my doom mongering. No, I meant investigate. Come work in Precinct 41. Work with Price? I'm flattered, but I don't know if I... Would fit him. And crazy enough. Can take the stress. He doesn't know how to finish the sentence. This truly came as a surprise to him. Not a bad one. But he's at a loss. Flattered? You're yet no Kitsuragi. We would be flattered if you even considered. I would have to tie things up in GRIH first. But, I mean, whatever is coming, Jamrock will be more central to it than the harbor. The lieutenant turns very serious all of a sudden. And we also have a huge caseload, Lieutenant. Piles that we need to get back to. Mountains, even. I do like the sound of that. He returns her smile. He's really considering it. Alright. A Phasmid, I need to tell Lena about this as soon as possible. Who is Lena? She lives at 1113 Tabernacle Road in Jamrock, remember? A cryptozoologist. She lives in Jamrock on Tabernacle Road. She told me about this Phasmid. Tabernacle? It's on the way over. Near where you live on Perdition. She looks at Vikmer. Fine. If we're gonna drop you off anyway. 
she and her husband were conducting the search for the Fasimeter. It's their discovery, in part. They should know as soon as possible. It would do you good to deliver some positive news for a change. <laughs> okay, am I a dirty cop working for La Puta Madre? No. No, because a suspect seemed to think... You're too unstable to work for a mob boss. You're suicidal, Harry. No mob boss would take you. I assure you, I wouldn't consult for a corrupt unit. He would immediately backpedal out of yep. it. I told you it's not that bad. All right, I'm ready. Good. She looks at you, then Vic Ma. Fuck it, let's go. Tron brought his motor carriage. It's a 20 minute drive to Jamrock. You close your eyes and hear the dogs bark. A lone woman sits by a factory window, dreaming of meteorite strikes. On Rue de saint jerome a square bullet slides into a square-shaped chamber. In Old South, a man without eyelids smiles. Spring has come. It's time. Dawson? Yes. McLean? Yes. Heidelstam? No. Vicmere? Yes. Dubois? Of course. Really? Nick Scottleep looks up from the list. I hear he's unstable. You say that like it's a bad thing. Captain Potomley Price gestures with a ballpoint pen. It's dim in his office, and the curtains are drawn. Harry's our man. He'll pull through. When he does, he'll side with the people. Understood. Gottlieb returns to the list. Minnow? Of course. Wonderful. Then can we please just go back to Jamrock now? And there's the credits. I'll be back with a brief summary once they're over there.
And there we have it. The end of Disco Elysium, the final cuts. I enjoyed the game a lot, um, as you could probably tell. Uh, if not by, you know, watching the videos, then purely by the fact that most of my recording sessions range from like two to four hours. Whereas usually with most games I record maybe two hours at the most. It was just a really enjoyable game. A lot of lore, actually, which is something that I usually don't care about in most games. And to be frank, I didn't really care about it a lot here. But I, I, for me, it's more that I like the concept or the idea to have such a vast world with such a deep history in a game rather than me actually being interested all too much in it. Um, there's also... I've done a bit of research, I say research, I've looked it up a bit on the internet to see if there'll be any sequels or other games related to it. And as far as I know from the developers of the game, they have said that they definitely want to do more in this world. Now, whether that means a direct sequel to this or, you know, maybe something like a backstory, maybe about Harry's past, maybe about something else entirely, maybe about the revolution, anything like that. You could make 15 games in this universe easily uh, without any problems. That's how deep the lore goes and how much thought they put into it. Which, you know, makes me hopeful for the future. The question is just, when will those games come? Will they get enough funding for it? I'm, I mean, I'm assuming they'll, they'll get enough funding for a second game for sure, because Disco Elysium was fairly... Maybe not necessarily popular, but fairly successful. Uh, won a couple of awards and stuff like that. Um, the fact alone that they actually managed to go back to the game after a year or two and fully voice over, uh, do full voiceover for it, which, you know, it costs quite a lot. That alone pretty much speaks for the fact that it was pretty successful. So I'm confident that we'll, unless something goes really wrong, we'll see a sequel of some sorts, and when I say sequel, I mean another game in that universe, not necessarily a sequel, I guess, if we're being pedantic. Um, and once that does come, I promise you I will definitely play it on the channel. What I'm not sure about is what happens if it doesn't have voiceover at the start. Because I think the voice acting actually add, adds a lot to the game. So. I think what I might do if there is another game in the series and it doesn't have voice acting at the start is that I would wait until it does, assuming that it would get it. Um, because I just think it's it's too valuable to miss it, even if that means I have to wait a while longer until I play it. But yeah, definitely enjoyed the game a lot and I hope you enjoyed the game as well. Thanks for watching. And I hope to see you again in the next project. Bye.